All right, let's talk about understanding oscilloscope bandwidth, rise time, and signal fidelity. In particular, uh, bandwidth and rise time. That's what I want to talk about today. So this is a technical brief by Textronics. I think they know something about oscilloscopes. And they talk about uh, what does bandwidth not tell us? Bandwidth does the specification tell us everything, blah, 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 blah. There's this cool chart here. It says the bandwidth is 0.35 divided by the rise time. And uh, you can see that uh, square waves will do funny things. And anyway, you can read this and take a look at uh, a bunch of uh, requirements for particular things. Here's this. Formula again, 0.35 divided by bandwidth. Uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff in here. Uh, I think Keysight knows something about oscilloscopes as well. Uh, here's an application note on uh, making a bandwidth and rise time requirements. And uh, they have some graphs and they talk about some things. And uh, then they have some rules of thumb here. Conclusions, I don't know. They talk about, they talk about some uh, some uh, filters in the oscilloscopes. Some are top normal filters. Some have higher orders where they have a more steep thing, and uh, maybe that does uh, maybe that does some things you might want to worry about. Uh, here is a uh, thing on bandwidth and rise time from these are answers questions and answers from Tektronics, and it talks about. Um, the magic 0.35 number again, but then it says, oh, by the way, modern oscilloscopes might be 0.45 instead of 0.35. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> now what are we going to do? Um, so, you will get, um, in the old days, it was always 0.35, no questions asked. But these days, you will see the numbers 0.4 and 0.45 used instead of the 0.35. So I think it's important that we know where the 0.35 number came from and why they're using different numbers these days. So um, I'm going to do some mathematics and show you where the 0.5, uh, 0.35 comes from and then uh, tell you a little bit of hand wave, but um, there's a whole bunch of real rigorous math you would have to do in order to derive the 0.3 and the 0.45. But let's go ahead and take a look at where that 0.35 came from. Okay, let's do math. Everybody loves math. Um, so if we have a oscilloscope, it has a bandwidth, which means it operates up to a particular frequency and then it starts to roll off, right? That, that's like a filter, right? So if we have a, a filter here, this is volts and this is time, uh, this is frequency, sorry, volts and frequency. Ah, let's say a little f. Uh, It'll go along a straight line, and then it will it will roll off. So this is the roll off here. And when it rolls off uh, 3 dB, minus 3 dB, we call that the cutoff frequency. And that is the bandwidth of the oscilloscope. Where the oscilloscope starts to fall off, that's, so if you have a 100 megahertz oscilloscope, then, then this frequency right here is 100 megahertz, right? All right. So let's think of a different system. Let's think of a, let's think of a system where we have time. So this is voltage, but this is time, little t, okay? And in this system we have, we're going along and then we go, woo, we go up, and then we go this way. And then we have uh, a rise time. We have a 10% to 90% rise time, okay? So this difference here between these two numbers, this delta t, okay, that's our rise time. Now, how is this number and this number related, okay? Well, we can, we can express this as an equation. We can say the volts here is equal to 1 minus e to the minus t over a funny number tau, okay? So the voltage here is 1 minus e to this, so that's the roll off here, okay? The voltage here is going to be uh, that voltage minus that voltage, okay? So let's go ahead and use this formula and we'll say, okay, well, the 
voltage at t time 10, okay, the 10% point, okay, uh, that's going to be 0 0.1, okay? It's going to be equal to the 10th percentile, right? So it's 0 0.1. And that's going to be 1 minus e to the minus t of the 10 thing, tau, okay? So we get to here, okay? Then if we take the 1 and the minus, we get um, e, we put e over here, that sends it positive, minus t10 over tau uh, equals 0.9, okay? 0.91, one, 1 minus 0.1, okay? And then if we do the uh, uh, logarithm on this thing, we get uh, the t of the 10th percent is going to be equal to minus tau times the logarithm, natural logarithm of 0 0.9, 0.9, okay? And we're going to get this to be 0 0.105 uh, tau, okay? So 0 0.105 taus, okay? All right, so now if we do it for uh, the 90, that's equal to 0 0.9, and that's equal to 1 minus e to the minus t90 divided by tau, and we get e to the minus t90 over tau is going to be equal to 0 0.1, all right? 0 0.1, which is 1 minus 0 0.9, okay? 0 0.1. And then we end up being uh, T90 is going to be minus tau natural logarithm of 0.1, or um, this is going to be 2.2 tau, okay? And so what is delta T? Delta T is the 90% 90, 90 minus the 10%. What is the 90%? 2.2. And what is the 10%? Uh, 0.9. No, 0 0.105. 0 0.105. And what is this? This is 2. Uh, let's see. Did it? Wait a minute. 2. Point, what am I doing wrong here? I did something wrong. I'm sorry, this is 2.3. I got ahead of myself. This number is 2.3. Okay, 2.3. And then when you do 2.3, which is the 90% minus the 10%, 0 0.15, this is going to be 2.2 tau, right? These were both times tau. We get 2.2 tau. Okay, 2.2 tau. Well, 2.2 tau. That's interesting. So let's um, then say, um, remember we had, uh, let's see here. I, 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 I talked about the magic number tau. Let me define tau. Tau is actually equal to 1 minus 2 pi f cutoff frequency. Okay, that's what tau was. 1 over 2 pi f cutoff frequency. Whew. Okay. Re remember we had our time was 2.2 tau. 2.2 tau. Or 2.2 times 10 to the 1. I mean, uh, 1 over 2 pi f c. Okay. So we have 2.2 divided by 2 pi, 1 over fc, okay? And what is 2 over 2 pi? Get out our calculator. 2.2 divided by 2 divided by pi. Where's pi on this calculator? Where's pi? I know it's here somewhere. There it is. It is 
zero one four okay <laughs> or and then this is one over FC so this is equal to 0.35 divided by FC okay is our time okay so the rise time is 0.35 divided by FC. What is FC? FC is the cutoff frequency. That's the thing we call bandwidth, okay? 0.35 divided by bandwidth, okay? Or bandwidth equals 0.35 divided by time, okay? You can do it either way. All right, so if we want to figure out the bandwidth of the oscilloscope, we can measure its rise time and divide it into 0.35, and that will give us our answer, okay? Now, we did all this math, and we did it for the case of this simple low-pass filter that's expressed with this equation, okay? This is a first-order equation, okay? So... The solution of 0.35 is for a um, first order. But that's great for analog oscilloscopes because analog oscilloscopes basically have first order filters in them. But what about digital oscilloscopes these days? A second order filter, okay, second order filter will be 0.4 divided by bandwidth. And a uh, third order will be 0.45 divided by bandwidth, okay? These require more fancy mathematics. You need to do a Fourier transform to go from uh, time domain into frequency domain and everything. But if you take my word for it, um, in the old days, we used 0.35. But modern oscilloscopes, we're going to be using either a 0.4 or 0.45, and that will give us a ballpark number of our bandwidth. All right, now that we know where the magic numbers come from, let's go ahead and measure, measure an oscilloscope or two. <laughs> 